Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I created this candy corn inspired wig. I am so happy with how this came out. So I'm so excited to show you how I did it. So this was inspired by the colors of candy corn. So candy corn is actually white, orange to yellow, but I do like how this looks like the light to dark gradient. So use the same colors, but not in the same order. I actually got inspired by this picture I found on Pinterest, so I'll put it up on the screen. So the credit for this photo goes to Monarch Hair Co. and they use Pulp Riot to create this look. But the colors that I use today are the Lunar Tides colors. So I used a Solar Flare and Citrine Yellow to create this look. So I'm gonna show you how I did it and I'll also show you how I did the install with the Bold Hold glue or wig adhesive. This was my first time using it and I love it. I love how this came out. I'm gonna come a little closer so you guys can see how flawless this looks. I'm so excited. Look at this. Hello. Lace who? Lace where? Ah, I'm so excited. I'm so happy with how this came out. So I can't wait to show you how I did it. So let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so this is the wig I'm going to be using today. Well, I had two of the same wig, so I'm just showing you one of them here. It is a full lace unit. I think it was about 10 inches, and then I cut it into this bob. So I wanted to cut it before I did the color, obviously, so that the color placement would be even and, you know, the correct size instead of doing the color and then cutting it after. So you can see me here just sectioning out the hair before I get started with the color. So these are the two colors I'm going to be using today from Lunar Tides. This is my first time trying a Lunar Tides color and they do, I mean I did like it, it came out pretty nice. So I'm just starting off with the citrine yellow and I'm going to put that all the way up. So this is technically a bit larger than the section that I wanted to do, but just because this is the bottom section at the nape of the neck, I did want to bring the color all the way up to the root so that it would kind of look like, you know, like a clean section if I were to pull up the hair or something like that instead of having like a short blonde root. I hope that kind of makes sense. And so now I'm going in with the solar flare. It does look a little bit more red on camera, but it is a dark orange. So I'm just placing that at the ends. And then this is a trick that I learned from Cynthia Lumsey. So to blend the colors together, you just add a little bit more color right before they meet. And then you're gonna use that extra hair color to like, you know, smush them together and get like a really nice blend. And I really took my time doing this color because I really wanted the blend to be really seamless. So I really worked in small sections and took my time with this one. So originally I was going to work back to front, but then I decided to abandon the, the back section for just a moment because I wanted to mark out my guide. So you can see that the color was, the yellow is kind of a little high in the back. So what I'm doing now is just blocking out the colors in the, the size that I actually want them to be. So then I can use this as a guide for the rest of the hair. So just kind of looking and making sure it's balanced from the front as well. So now that I have my guide placement, now I can kind of match everything to this size. So what I'm doing now is using vertical strokes to blend the yellow into the blonde. I didn't want it to be a harsh line. I wanted it to have, you know, a nice transition. So again, you know, working in small sections, making sure that blend is nice and using some vertical strokes there. And then I basically repeat the process. So adding the orange at the end and then using the technique I showed you before to make sure everything is blended in. And I'm also rubbing the yellow into the blonde as well. So I'm just gonna let you watch this part with some music and I'll speak with you soon. <laughs>
right so now i'm using those vertical strokes again kind of went a little ham on this one <laughs> blending the yellow into the blonde i really wanted to have a nice transition there but in doing so i feel like i kind of brought the yellow up a little higher than i intended but that's all right so i just let that sit for a while and then washed it out let it air dry so this is where we are at right now so i'm just straightening out the wig this is a ghd flat iron so straightening it out and then I'm using a hot comb to push the hair back. I like it when wigs have that pushed back look around the hairline. So I'm just kind of prepping the wig so that it overall has the same style that I want it to have before I do the install. So, ooh girl, look at that hair. She's looking silky. She's looking cute. And now we're ready to move on to the install. So what I'm doing here is just making sure the straps are secured in the back and all my hair is inside. And then I'm just going to take some clips and clip back the hair so that the hairline is free to work with and there aren't any like little hairs all around, like you know around the hairline. So what I'm doing here is just lining everything up before I glue it down. So making sure the little sideburn areas are in position and everything is in the place that I want it to be. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting vertically into the lace because I'm going to work in small sections to glue down the lace. This is the Bold Hold Skin Protect. So you're supposed to use this before the Bold Hold Adhesive. So I'm just, I just sprayed it on a tissue and I'm just wiping it on my skin to get my skin prepped. And this is the adhesive I'm gonna be using today. I think this one is the Bold Hold Active. So what I'm gonna do is just apply little dots of the product. And at first I use my finger to kind of blend it out. But then you'll see me later on using a q-tip because I felt like using my finger was a little bit too messy because it gets like stuck to your finger and it's like a whole thing. So just pushing it in with a comb and I'll show you in the next section. Working in like those small sections really helps. So I'm just cutting off a little bit of the lace, not all the way, but just like so it's not in my eye. <laughs> So again, the small dots, and here I'm using a Q-tip. So these are the Q-tips from Miniso. These ones are really good because they're not like super hairy, so you don't get little hair stuck in the in the glue. And then I liked using the rat tail comb better to like really push it into the skin. And I only used one layer of the adhesive just because this was my first time working with it and I kind of wanted to take the wig off later in the night. So I didn't want like a super strong hold, but if I was gonna do this again, I would probably do at least two layers to get a better hold. Even though one was like pretty good, but I think about two layers is good for like a light hold. And then I think you can use up to like four or five for like a really strong hold if you want to wear your wig for a couple of days. But I really like the hold that this gives and it was really easy to work with. You just kind of let it get tacky, kind of like you would with eyelash glue. Let it get clear first and then you stick down your lace. And then to trim off the extra lace, I just used an eyebrow razor. So this was my first time using an eyebrow razor to cut off the extra lace. I've seen people do this technique before and I was always like, how do you not just like shave the skin off your face? <laughs> I thought it was like so scary, but once I tried it, it's actually not that scary at all. So I'm just using small back and forth motions to cut off the extra lace. And this works way better than using scissors. You can get a lot closer to the skin. Obviously be careful, but it does give you a really nice finish. So I can see why people do this. And just to set the, you know, the glue and everything, I'm just using a little piece of pantyhose just to tie it in place. And I'm gonna let that set for a little bit. And then, da 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 da, the final look. She's pretending to take off the pantyhose. Here we are with the final look. I'm so happy with how this came out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.